Hey guys, PFI Dude here. Time for some more test fire updates. We've got a Sega 12 that's getting ready to ship out, and we've also got an AK bullpup that we just finished up. Let's move over to the table. We'll take a look at these, and then we will uh, show you some of the range footage as well. Okay, first one we'll look at. It's going to be the AK bullpup. Uh, this came in, started just as a standard AK. This is the Sentry Arms bullpup kit. Uh, I won't lie to you, this is not something that I believe most people would be able to assemble on their own and if they could, they probably wouldn't be able to get it to function properly. Now, that doesn't mean nobody can do it. Uh, if you're pretty handy with tools and you know your way around the firearm, you might be able to put it together, but there was a lot of uh, hurdles that we ran into with it, uh, including some hardware issues. We did go through two different kits um, and they forgot to give us hardware to mount the stock they also forgot to give us hardware to mount the handguard and they didn't give us even any idea of how to mount the face shield on the other side of the top cover we'll show you some more of that in a minute start to uh, from the back obviously a shortened stock slides in and covers up the factory trigger group so your factory trigger used to sit right there it is replaced by a modified uh, rocker trigger assembly in there that connects to a rod that goes all the way up to your new trigger which is positioned at the front of the firearm. Uh, it does get pretty hot up here. This uh, hand guard for your support hand even just running about a half a magazine through it I was feeling tons of heat coming out the bottom of that uh, hand guard so it wouldn't be something I would say you'd want to go shoot um, you know hundreds of rounds through as fast as you can or you're definitely going to be filling it that trigger will heat up as well. That trigger rides right along the barrel on the front of that thing. So we made sure we took time in between each magazine and let that cool down a little bit. You will not be able to use your factory sights. If you notice how high those, um, you cannot get a proper cheek weld on top of that heat shield and get a sight pitcher. So you will need some sort of an optic or you will need to mount the included raised sights which brings your front sight up to about here and then also has a rear sight that uh, raises up as well. This one he's going to put an optic on so I really didn't worry about the sights. Okay, Tapco magazine seemed to work just fine. I didn't have any problems with it and those were the first rounds we had put through that magazine. I'll flip this over for you. Um, this is the heat shield here. Okay, um, The way that I attached it I actually tapped the top of the cover, used some very small screws, and then ground them off inside the top cover. So there you have it, a complete bulb up. And let's take a look at how it ran today at the range. Is it lobbing him up and over? Oh, shit, that one went straight over my head. It went back that way? Yeah. yeah. Towards the rear. Okay. Yeah, that worked. Is that better? Is it still hitting them? Okay. Alright, here we go with the Sega 12 review. This one is for Militia Leader Gray Squirrel. Yes, I said Militia Leader Gray Squirrel. This is his Sega shotgun that will be shipping to him later this month. Starting at the back, we've got a Tromix stock with a push button folder mechanism. Some of them that you've seen is just a, uh, a spring-loaded stock you push down on the stock itself and it folds this one actually folds by a button and then we'll also lock 
into place on the side. So, um, we have ergo grip. You've seen that trigger guard before. This is a single sided, right handed extended mag release. This is something that you haven't seen on one of ours so far in the videos. This is the rock and lock adapter. What this allows you to do is get your angles correct when you're trying to uh, load the magazines without the bolt being open, locked to the rear. It is kind of difficult until you get the hang of it, but it can be done in that adapter. That guide helps quite a bit. This is also a new quad rail that you haven't seen. This is the Chaos Extended Quad Rail. And these are Chaos's new sights that are mounted to that quad rail. Uh, those are independent of the quad rail kit. They do have to be drilled, tapped, and mounted separately um, for the rear and the front sight. So it is kind of time intensive to do those, make sure you get them straight, but they work very nicely. That's the first time I've taken them out and used them, and they're very impressive. And then we have another one of the Chaos uh, Warthog brakes. So let's take a look at this one in action as well. Alright guys, to wrap this up, if you notice, there was a couple malfunctions on the Sega 12 uh, was when we were firing it. The first one was due to lack of gas pressure. We had the setting turned too low. Turned it up and it cycled much better, but you'll notice there was still a malfunction in there. Um, those rounds did not even get a strike from the, from the firing pin. The reason for that is putting a lighter recoil spring in these uh, actually slows down the cycle rate. So it takes a little bit longer for that bolt carrier to fully seat with that new round in it. And if you pull the trigger too fast, it is possible to short stroke this and not allow it time to fully chamber. That's what I did. I anticipated it. I pulled the trigger too fast and we ended up having a, a malfunction. So after we realized that this had a slower cycle rate, I slowed down on the trigger a little bit and the drum cycled perfectly. So it takes a little bit of learning. Each individual shotgun is going to be different for you, but it's something that's definitely worth it. And once you learn how to shoot it, uh, you'll be very, very impressed with them. So thanks to both of you. These will be in the mail shortly. And thanks to all of you for watching.